Hello everyone, welcome to iQuanta. This is the peak time of your preparation and you must be revising all your concept of quantitative aptitude and practicing day and night, right? So today, I am here, Sajjan Barnawal, and we are going to discuss four important concepts of your quantitative aptitude syllabus, of which at least three will be used in upcoming CAT exams. What are those concepts? Let's not waste time. Let's quickly go to our first concept, which is most important relation in profit, loss and discount topic. So one thing that you need to understand that if you are aware of this triangle, which is uh, related to cost price, mark price and selling price. So from cost price, how do we achieve mark price? Whenever we are using the markup percentage. From mark price, how do we achieve selling price? Whenever we are applying any kind of discount percentage. From cost price to selling price, we are getting when we are applying profit percent. So you can see that <coughs> the profit percent is nothing but the successive of markup percentage and discount percentage. So you can get a very important relation that P is equal to M plus T minus MD upon 100 because discount is nothing but a decreasing value, right? So that's why this is the relation. This is very useful. And how do we imp implement this in questions? So let's say in a question, if it says that uh, after giving, let's say 30% discount, a shopkeeper makes 20% profit, a shopkeeper makes 20% profit, then find his markup percent. So you don't need to do anything here. You don't need to assume even anything. <coughs> you can directly use this that P is equal to M minus D minus MD upon 100. So we are given P which is 20 and M is not known, then the discount is given which is 30 minus 30 M upon 100. So this is cancelled out what we can say M minus 3 M by 10, 7 M upon 10 is equal to 50 or we can say M is equal to 500 upon 7 percent which we can convert into decimal as well. So 7 times 49, 71 point. Uh, three zero four percent approximate. So that's your answer, right? Then let's come to the next concept, which is area of a reason inside a hexagon. Now, multiple times CAT has asked question on this one that a particular region of uh, a hexagon, what is the ratio of uh, area of that region to the area of whole of hexagon or any other region? Okay, so let's say. This is a regular hexagon, something like this. And you have been asked that what is the, what is the area of, uh, if I draw this, like uh, if we join the midpoints of these two and these, this diagonal, what is the area of this region with respect to whole hexagon or maybe with respect to this region or this region. Now this, uh, this is a regular hexagon, the drawing is not up to the scale. So how do we solve it quickly, like in 30 seconds? So there is one trick to it. We know that a regular hexagon can be distributed into six equilateral, six equilateral triangles, right? But do you know that a regular hexagon can also be distributed into 24 equilateral triangles. How can we do that? See, take the midpoints. Let me draw this again so that we can get a much better picture. I'm just trying to take all the lines of equidistance. Okay. Now take the midpoint of this, take the midpoint of this, join these two. Take the midpoint of this and take the midpoint of this, join these two. Again, take the midpoint of uh, this and this, join these two. Then again, take the midpoint of uh, 
these two sides like this as well just like the previous one join these two then what do you do you join all the diagonals all the uh, big diagonals there are three right so join it like this then join it like this now you can see that we are getting one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and twelve a total of twenty four equilateral triangles now it does not matter whatever region area you need to find out you can just find that region in this figure and you can find the ratio quickly so if i check the reason that we are looking for here we are looking for this region right this region and uh, what how many equilateral triangles are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so this 7 out of total 24 so the ratio that we are looking for will be equal to 7 upon 24. Do you want to find the ratio of the area of this region to this region? Yes, then there are 5 equilateral triangle here. This will be equal to 7 is to 5. Do you want to find ratio of area of any other region that you can find here? Whatever is given in the exam, you can find that region here. You can find the ratio very easily. Okay, then comes the third one. It says important modulus graphs, solve it in seconds. So modulus questions, whenever they have asked modulus questions in recent years, they have been tricky questions. But if you have a uh, little knowledge of modulus graphs, then you can solve it very quickly. We're starting with the basics. What I will say that the graph of mod of x, you can draw it like this. This is the graph of mod of x. Now, if I want to add anything, let's say this is y is equal to mod of x. If I want to find y is equal to mod of x plus k, then the graph will go up k units like this one. And if k is negative, it will go down k units. This will be k. And then comes another one, which is y is equal to mod of x minus k inside the modulus then how do you draw the graph the graph will be something like this it will move to the right k units this will be your k same graph is moving up here when we are adding outside or subtracting outside same graph will move right or left whenever you are subtracting or adding in that order okay then we can take both of these together and draw something like that and then if we talk about more graphs, so more important graphs are like y is equal to mod of x minus a plus mod of x minus b. So this graph will be something like this. Okay, a will be less than b here. This is mod of x minus a plus mod of x minus b. Now you can see the minimum value of this graph can be obtained at this position. If you take three critical points like y is equal to mod of x minus a plus mod of x minus b plus mod of x minus c where a is less than b is less than c then how do you draw this? Then we will have to draw it something like this. This will be the graph. A will be here, B will be here and C will be here. And the minimum value of this expression will be obtained always at the median which is B. Whenever you put B here, you will get the minimum value of this expression and this is really, really helpful. After that, if we talk about more of the graphs like Y is equal to mod of X minus 3 plus mod of not plus let's take mod of minus mod of x plus 4 so one quick way to draw it first take x is equal to 3 if you take x is equal to 3 this will become 0 minus 7 so at x is equal to 3 i am getting 7 this will be 7 and at x is equal to minus 4 what will happen this will become 7 minus this will become 0 so this is minus 7 first one is the minus 7 and second one is so at 3 i am getting this as minus 7 and at minus 4 i am getting plus 7 
this value. You don't need to do much. You just need to join these two points. And after this, this value will be constant and this will be constant. A straight line. This will be a straight line. It does not matter what values you are taking for x after 3, it will always be same. Let's put x is equal to 10. 10 minus 3 is 7. 10 plus 4 is 14. 7 minus 14 is minus 7. Right? Then, then if you have something like this, y is equal to mod of x plus 4 minus mod of x minus 3. Means the bigger critical point is after negative. So, we will have to make a little change here. This is 3. This is minus 4. Once again, let's check the values for, for more clarification. If you put x is equal to minus 4, this will become 0 and this will become 7. So, ultimately, we are getting minus 7 here. This will be minus 7. If you put x is equal to 3, this will become 7 and this will become 0. That is 7. So, just opposite, it will be like this. Okay, at x is equal to 0, the value will be 1, right? So, because, so this will be a little above, okay? Be careful about that. This will be a little above, that's it. Nothing more than this. The graph will look like this. Using that, you can solve complex problem very easy. And then mod of x plus mod of y is equal to k. Then how do you draw this? It will be like this. Take k here, k here, minus k here, and minus k here. Join these. This will be i square. And using that, you can also find the area of this square because this length will be k root 2. So area will be 2k square. That will be the area of the region bounded by this graph. Okay, then one more graph, one more important graph. This is mod of x plus y plus mod of x minus y is equal to 2k. If that's the case, then we can once again take k here, take k here, minus k here, minus k here and uh, join these by four lines like this. Again, this will be a square and the area bounded by this graph. So as you can see, this is k, this is minus k. So this length will be 2k. So area will be 4k square. And this is the uh, very, very important graphs that you can learn in modulus and you won't have any kind of issues while solving the questions. All right. So I hope that is clear. Then. Let's come to our last point. It says partial fraction concept in sequence and series. Now, if, what do you do if you have questions like find the sum of uh, first 10 terms of something like 1 by 3 into 7 plus 1 by 7 into 11 plus 1 by 11 into 15 and so on. First 10 terms. So see, this is very easy to figure out. Once you learn this, you cannot unlearn this. What happens if I take 1 by n <coughs> minus 1 by n plus 1? This will be equal to n plus 1 minus n, n into n plus 1. So basically, this will be 1 upon n into n plus 1. And if you take 1 by n minus 1 by n minus 2, then this will be equal to n minus 2 minus n. Okay, so this, this value should be plus 2. So n plus 2, n into n plus 2 and that will be equal to 2 into n into n plus 2. Similarly, if we have a difference of k, so 1 by n upon n plus k, then that will be equal to k upon n into n plus k. So this can be written as this, this can be written as this. Now, these type of questions will be very easy for you, right? This type of questions will be very easy for you. So 1 upon 3 into 7. 1 upon 3 into 7 can be quickly written as 1 by 4 into 1 by 3 minus 1 by 7. Correct? As you can see, <coughs> this k will go here. 1 upon 7 into 11 can be written as 1 by 4 
वन बाय सेवन माइनस वन बाय इलेवन एंड टेन टर्म्स फर्स्ट टर्म इज थ्री सेकेंड टर्म इज प्लस फोर थर्ड टर्म इज प्लस फोर सो नाइन टू फोर थर्टी सिक्स प्लस थ्री वन बाय थर्टी नाइन इन टू इट विल बी फोर्टी थ्री सो दिस आई कैन राइट वन बाय फोर इन टू वन बाय थर्टी नाइन माइनस वन बाय फोर्टी थ्री करेक्ट ना इफ यू एड ऑल दिस वट विल हैपन वन बाय सेवन वन बाय सेवन वन बाय इलेवन टिल ऑल द टर्म्स विल बी कैंसल्ड आउट एक्सेप्ट फर्स्ट एंड लास्ट वन सो द सम द फर्स्ट टेन टर्म्स दैट वी आर लुकिंग फॉर वन बाय फोर इन टू वन बाय थ्री माइनस वन बाय फोर्टी थ्री विच गिव्स अस फोर्टी माइनस थ्री फोर्टी थ्री माइनस थ्री फोर्टी फोर्टी बाय फोर इन टू वन बाय वन ट्वेंटी नाइन दैट विल बी इक्वल टू टेन अपॉन वन ट्वेंटी नाइन करेक्ट एंड दैट्स योर आंसर टेन अपॉन वन ट्वेंटी नाइन that's the right answer and you can solve this orally if you have practiced these type of questions and apart from that if you are looking for any type of concepts to discuss and uh, if you if you think that you need to learn something amazing in any part of your quantitative aptitude syllabus then let me know in the comments and i will take care for it okay thank you